Well, let's continue with our introduction to the Earth's magnetic field. And uh, just as a reminder, we'll just kind of summarize what we talked about the last time, and that is that the Earth's magnetic field, first of all, it's complex. And uh, just like the gravitational field, there are features in the Earth's magnetic field that don't have that much to do with uh, geology. Uh, so the Earth's main magnetic field, for example, which uh, uh, spans about uh, 40, 45,000 nan nanoteslas from minimum to maximum, uh, is associated with uh, the fluid flow in the liquid uh, outer core. So currents uh, are created in the Earth's liquid outer core that produce the features that we see in the Earth's main magnetic field. Now the remnant field, that is a field which is associated with geology and is probably going to be the field of uh, interest to you. And that's shown over here in this anima animation, which uh, hopefully you've had a chance maybe uh, to look at some of those websites. And it's a, it's a field which is more or less frozen into the rocks as they form, so, or as they were metamorphosed and their temperature dropped below the uh, Curie temperature. So they take on the local magnetic field at that particular location in time. And then there are also the fluctuations which are shorter term in nature uh, that are associated with uh, charged particles from, you know, in the solar wind slamming against the Earth's uh, main magnetic field, stirring things up, creating uh, secondary electromagnetic fields and currents and, and so on that we see when we're out collecting uh, data. And those currents can be, those magnetic fields can be quite large and make it nearly impossible to collect good data. So it's a good thing before, you know, if you are uh, collecting magnetic field data, if you are going out for a survey, it's a good thing to check the space weather before you head out the door. So uh, just a few additional pieces of information that you may want to have a look at. There's a nice poster on the NOAA site. Uh, if you haven't thought about the Earth's magnetic field for a while, or if you're completely new to it, there are some, uh, you know, bite-sized chunks of information here that will um, kind of pull you, uh, pull you up to date with some of the salient features of the field, which is what we did in the last video, and um, uh, also another, um, uh, another fold-out. Uh, advertisement, which uh, again has some uh, nugget-sized pieces of information about the Earth's magnetic field. And I think you know a lot of us are aware that the uh, birds and butterflies and whales and a lot of different animals uh, navigate. Uh, they have uh, uh, iron, little iron magnets and uh, magnets that uh, help them tell where they are, where they, where it is that they want to go. Uh, you may find this CrowdMag uh, application for your iPhone may be of use. We'll talk about the NOAA magnetic field calculations. Uh, you may not have thought about it, but the uh, Earth's magnetic field is, helps drill those horizontal wells and keep track of their location. And we'll also talk about uh, polar wonders which is uh, part of the secular variation that we said that we were going to talk about. And that is illustrated here. Now this diagram starts back in about 1590 when they were able to get fairly reliable estimates of the location of the Earth's magnetic pole, you know, where it is that the compass is pointing. And you can see in the last hundred years, 1904 up to present and beyond, this goes out to about the year 2020, uh, that the magnetic pole, geomagnetic pole, has been racing northward into the Arctic Ocean, and this would be the geographic pole here, and it's been doing it at almost well, at kind of an accelerated. It looks like it may have been dropping off a bit here recently, but uh, this is a prediction, but it, at, at an accelerated pace compared to what it did in the uh, uh, preceding 400 years. This is just a Google Earth image of that uh, path from 1904 to 2020. And the predictions are that in about the year 2050, the um, 
north geomagnetic pole will be located somewhere over here in Siberia. Um, so at least that's the prediction. And you can see it is, is heading along at a steady clip here, um, just to the west of the Earth's geographic north pole. So again, 1904 to 2020, uh, this record of the Earth's geomagnetic pole beginning back in uh, 1590 or so. Now another point that we want to make is that the Earth's field, we mentioned this when we talked about the magnetic field that's produced by fluid um, uh, flow in the Earth's uh, flow of iron, rich, uh, predominantly iron fluids in the Earth's outer core, uh, we mentioned that it's actually decelerating, or it's drifting to the west. And this is a map of the Earth's main magnetic field uh, back in 1900. This is hard to see, 50,000 nanotesla contour line. Come up to 2005, this is the location of that 50,000 nanotesla contour line. You can see that it's closer to the Canadian coastline. And we can see in a close-up here, again, 1900, 50,000 nanotesla, a little bit blurry. Uh, over here, 55,000 nanotesla, a little closer to the Canadian coastline. This 60,000 nanotesla contour not really even showing up. 2005. So we basically have a westward rotation of the Earth's main magnetic field, and that's because the Earth's outer core is rotating a little bit more slowly than the mantle and the crust. So the mantle and the crust are kind of getting ahead of it, and so we see the main magnetic field lines drifting to the west. Uh, of course, there are other motions uh, that, that are also longer term uh, that we don't have to worry about on a daily basis, perhaps. But there are changes in the location of the Earth's geomagnetic north pole that are associated with the Chandler wobble, and that's about a 6.5 year period wobble. And you can see that uh, 1909 to 1916, just looking at one period, we have this the spiraling of uh, the pole associated with that period, uh, come up to 1964 to 1971, 1983 to 1990 in yellow, 1996 to 2001 in red, and you can see these, uh, you can see the spiraling nature uh, occurring at the same, roughly the same period as the Chandler wobble. And then over here, we see something which occurs on a daily basis, and you, you may, this is something again that you may not have realized. Uh, the magnetic, the Earth's magnetic field is very dynamic, and the magnetic pole here is kind of outlining an ellipse, which is uh, on the order of about eight, 80 kilometers, 50 miles along its major axis, and uh, it does this uh, little dance once every day. So, pretty busy. The uh, magnetic field is pretty busy. Again, when we come back and we look at the secular variations over here in Sicily, uh, this is from Robinson and Carew's text. Um, you know, starting back in 1600, almost the, the um, uh, geographic, um, or the geomagnetic North Pole, almost in the same direction as the geographic North Pole. Uh, it comes out to about 17, 18 degrees east, and then comes back in 1965 to almost alignment again with the Earth's geographic North Pole. Over here we have a similar diagram for the variations in the declination. That's the angle that the magnetic field, when you're holding a compass in that location, makes with geographic north. And um, so we can see that in 1600 over to the east, and uh, 1800 over to the west, and then kind of back a little bit less westerly in 1955 in Boston, 1723 to 1960. And we'll take a little bit closer look at that the next time. Uh, 
when we talk about the magnetic field com components. And we'll actually show you where you can download those components and uh, plot them up, up over a 100-year period, in addition to just kind of telling you what they are. And, and you know, hopefully you're reading through your text, whatever, again, whatever text you're reading. And you know that there are seven components to the often called elements, but not to be confused with magnetic elements. Uh, there's the Earth's main magnetic field intensity, the vertical component. The east-west component is your y component. The north-south, your x. The horizontal projection of the main field is the h component. Then we have the declination, the angle that the horizontal component makes with the geographic north. And we have the inclination, which again is the angle that the main magnetic field makes with the with its projection onto the surface of the Earth. So we'll talk more about that next time. So see you then.